Hey, welcome back. This is Dave with Brazos Valley Barbell. And a few weeks ago, I asked Instagram what people's common issues were with squat bench and deadlift. And behind squatting, the second most common question that I got was bench press sticking points. And to me, this is a little bit interesting because I guess this is a question that, that commonly comes up in the gym when people ask about how to fix their bench press. Sticking points seem to be more common of, a, of an issue that people, or at least they, they use that term more often with bench press rather than the other lifts. And I, I think that's interesting because people seem to maybe go back to their um, original, maybe bro habits when they're thinking about the bench press as opposed to the other lifts. So I think when, when people think about squatting or they think about the deadlift and they have some sort of failure in the middle of the lift or something, they acknowledge that there's probably some sort of technical inefficiency. If the squat in the middle, if your hips keep shooting back, we wouldn't necessarily call that a sticking point, but you would acknowledge there was a weakness that's causing you to have some sort of, of form malfunction, right? So with the bench press, it's a similar thing, but I think the terminology gets changed a little bit and leads to people asking the wrong questions. So today we're gonna answer some of those. So with bench press sticking points, the answer is the same as pretty much all the other lifts, is that any time that there is a a hard sticking point, the answer is really one of two things and probably a combination of both. The first one is that your mechanics are just not efficient enough. So if you're sticking off your chest every time, there are some things that we can do to fix that. If you're sticking closer to lockout, you're probably getting loose or something like that. But we can obviously address some of the, the, the muscles that are focusing on there. If, if squat, if, you, if you're staying in an awesome position, your, your leg stand underneath you, your back stays tight and you miss the rep, we wouldn't say there was a sticking point, you'd say that you just weren't strong enough. So the same thing would be true with the bench press, is that first we wanna iron out all of the actual technique issues, which I'll link some of my videos that I've made before. The two videos specifically would be bench press technique and setup, and then the elbow flaring with the bench press. Both of those are huge when it comes to actually maintaining a mechanical advantage over the bar. So I'll address some of those in this video and also talk about some of the forces and muscles that are at play when we're actually bench pressing. So first off, the thing that you'll see is the, the emphasis that I put through every set on, on tightness and control. So um, again, some of these things were addressed in other videos, so go ahead and watch those. But if you're missing a lot of reps, uh, uh, just going back to the basics and making sure that you're very, very consistent with all of these is gonna be a, a huge factor. You can see, so you can see even with the empty bar, I'm not just banging out lots of reps. I'm making sure to be really deliberate. And the biggest thing to start off with um, about missing off of your chest when we're talking about bar path is generally gonna be that people are touching too high. So a couple of things that touching lower will do for you is going to be that it shortens the range of motion and it actually allows your front delts to get involved a little bit more. So if you're touching too, too high in your chest, meaning too close to your shoulders, rather than here, as you can see, touching a little bit closer to my, my abdomen, my front delts aren't going to be involved as much and the range of motion is going to be further, meaning that all of that effort off of my chest is going to be involved with my pecs. So that makes it very, very easy for your pecs to become a limiting factor. If your pecs are having to do 100% of the work off your chest, that makes it difficult for them to move maximal weight. By touching a little bit lower and involving my front delts a little bit more, I can get that bar moving off my chest a little bit better. So. In my mind, one of the biggest things with people having a missing or a sticking point just off their chest is going to be a combination of the muscles with their front delts and their pecs being too weak and inefficient bar path being not touching too low. So as we're going through these warmups, we're, we're not touching low enough would be a better way to say it. So as we're going through these warmups, uh, I think this is 160 kilos, so it's about 358 pounds. And I work up to a pretty long pause single of 385. And you can see the effort that I'm putting in into uh, tightness repetition. If you go through all of these reps, they all look the same. I'm touching low and I'm pressing it back. So one of the biggest tools that we can use to correct bar path and strength off the chest is going to be a longer paused bench press. So even with heavy weights, this is something that I've been really deliberate about and that people who have limitations off their chest end up failing these uh, but still need to stick with them would be that Practicing these hard reps, long pauses off your chest, ensures that you're doing good reps. People who are inconsistent will miss those a lot of times. So now I'm going through a couple doubles and you'll see that 
I was able to increase weight because my efficiency was good. So what I'm, what I'm training here is going to be making sure that I'm controlling the weight onto my chest, staying tight in the bottom and all of that. So one of the most common issues past your chest where people miss it, it would be just looseness. So when the, when we're talking about the elbow flare video and, and all those kind of things, one of the things that I'll address with that would be that as your elbows flare, your shoulders have to stay packed and tight. So we'll see here in the next angle how I, I, even though my elbows are flaring and unwinding, my shoulders are able to stay down well and maintain tightness so I can continue to deliver consistent force into the barbell. So from here, I'm really trying to retract my shoulders and to press my shoulders, so pulling my scapula into my back pockets is a good way to say that. But we'll see with a, with a touching point that you'll see how low I'm touching. Sometimes it's hard to see this from the, from the other angles. I'm touching well below my nipples, really uh, close maybe to my top abdomen. Some of that is from the arch that I have, but you can see how I'm able to press the bar back, um, elbows unwind, but my shoulders stay tight. So if you're missing it halfway up, most of the time, um, you'll uh, sometimes it's gonna be those lifters that get kind of wiggly in their shoulders and uh, a little bit squirmy. That loss of tightness is gonna be huge. Here you can see how much my elbows unwind and my elbows get back underneath the barbell and some internal rotation of my of my elbows. I'm sorry, my humerus. So that's actually allowing my, my pecs to work a little bit harder. So from those two angles, we can see, uh, we go back to the side view and, and see how those all come together in kind of the standard view, but lots and lots of tightness and control with all these reps, driving the barbell back. So misses off your chest, generally are bar path issues, meaning that you're not touching low enough and you're not utilizing your front delts and pecs appropriately. So some of the exercises that I think are, are huge to help build this. Um, incline presses are a great one to build your front delts and your pecs. So this is one I'm really, really bad at. I'm actually working a lot harder to make these better. And I'm almost seeing, seeing a one-to-one -one ratio. Anything that I get on my incline press, I see almost immediately on my, on my bench press. So training your front delts and your pecs is a, is a huge part of this one right here. Um, one of the things that I think is neglected a lot of times with people's training would be the just general isolation hypertrophy work. And one of my favorites is just a dumbbell chest fly. So I like the dumbbells more so than I like like cables. Cables would be great for uh, regular hypertrophy, but with the dumbbells, we really get challenged down to this bottom position. And by the way, my feet are up just because I'm comfortable here, not really trying to do anything besides that. But with the, with the dumbbells, the most challenging position is gonna be at the bottom, just like in a bench press. So it challenges your front delts, your pecs, all of that as far as stabilization. And I don't think that we get that with, uh, with the cables all that much. So really going through a controlled range of motion and emphasizing what that bottom portion is gonna look like. So long-term, the things that are gonna get your bench press better are actually going to be really emphasizing hypertrophy. So sometimes as power lifters, we, we think that we can get away with only doing the, the main competition lifts. But particularly for upper body lifts, the hypertrophy is going to be probably the biggest indicator of how good of your bench press is going to be. So sometimes we deadlift by just having good, efficient, uh, long arms, obviously, with me or something like that it makes me a very efficient deadlifter. And we can get away with some of those things. I don't think that's true with bench pressing. We can, we can emphasize mechanical advantage through arching and wider grip and those kind of things, but hypertrophy needs to play a front role. So close grip bench pressing is another great one for your triceps and your front delts. Um, emphasize keeping your elbows close will actually keep your, your front delts working really hard. Um, bench pressing is always going to work your triceps, but touching low and keeping your elbows tucked will help emphasize uh, getting your front delts stronger. So. so take the time to figure out the most efficient bar path. Take the time to learn how to maintain tightness through all the reps and take the time to build muscle and that will make, make your bench press success a whole lot better long term. So I'm um, going through lots of rep ranges and using variation will be a good tool. Um, I talked about some of the variations that you can use in some of the other videos, uh, like tempo bench presses, long pause bench presses, close grip, all those kind of things. Uh, but no shortcuts, just make sure that you're, you're doing the right technique every single time. So if you like this video, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, leave me some comments and I can make videos on, on what you're needing. So thanks a lot.